Welcome to the Def Cam. The claim that Indian technical teams have gained a major research and development breakthrough from the fragments of Chinese PL-15E air-to-air -air missiles allegedly recovered after the aerial engagements of May 2025 demands a careful and technically grounded examination. From the standpoint of aerospace engineering and combat forensics, such assertions appear highly exaggerated, crafted more for psychological or political messaging than as credible reflections of technical reality. The sheer violence of a high-speed missile's endgame, combined with the deliberate self-destructive design of modern precision munitions, makes the extraction of meaningful or reproducible data from debris an almost impossible task. Reverse engineering a weapon of this sophistication requires not only intact samples, but also access to its theoretical framework, design logic, tolerances, and proprietary software, none of which can be gleaned from a handful of scorched fragments. The terminal phase of a beyond-visual-range missile, such as the PL-15E, is inherently destructive. Upon nearing its target, the missile's warhead is programmed to detonate, producing a dense spray of high-velocity fragments intended to obliterate a fast-moving aircraft. This detonation alone subjects every component to immense thermal and mechanical stress. What remains then impacts the ground at supersonic speeds releasing enough kinetic energy to crush and deform the toughest alloys and composites. The wreckage that follows is not a collection of reusable modules, but a field of shattered metals, molten circuitry, and incinerated composites. To suggest that functional subassemblies could survive such an event ignores the physics of the impact and the deliberate fragility built into these systems. Modern missiles are often equipped with self-neutralizing features that ensure their most sensitive data and circuitry are destroyed upon termination to prevent capture or exploitation. The true heart of any advanced missile lies in its electronics, its radar seeker, signal processors, and guidance computers. In the PL-15E, the nose houses an active electronically scanned array radar seeker composed of delicate gallium nitride, transmit-receive modules, and intricate signal processing circuits. These elements are exceptionally fragile and are precisely the first to be destroyed upon detonation or impact. Even if fragments of the radar nose cone or circuit boards are recovered, what remains would be little more than fused silicon, charred copper traces, and warped ceramic substrates. The seeker's software its control logic, target discrimination algorithms, and electronic counter-countermeasure routines exists only as encrypted data in volatile memory that is obliterated long before ground impact. Without access to that software, any remaining hardware is functionally meaningless, as the behavior of the system is defined not by its circuits but by the digital architecture controlling them. The missile's propulsion system offers no easier path for extraction of sensitive data. The solid fuel motor is consumed entirely during flight, leaving behind an empty casing and traces of burnt propellant residue. The propellant's internal geometry, which dictates its thrust curve and burn characteristics, is lost forever. While metallurgical tests might reveal the general composition of the motor casing or nozzle material, such findings amount only to rudimentary information. Modern rocket propellants rely on complex formulations involving stabilizers bonding agents, and casting processes that cannot be reverse-engineered from combustion residue. Attempting to reconstruct the original propellant from what remains is comparable to identifying the ingredients of a meal by studying the ashes left in the oven. Even the missile's structural components yield limited insight. The use of titanium alloys or advanced carbon fiber composites may be identifiable but this only indicates the level of material technology available to the original manufacturer, not the design philosophy or aerodynamic rationale behind the weapon. The flight control system, the alignment of control surfaces, and the integration of sensors with flight dynamics are all perishable information, lost once the missile is destroyed. Examining fragmented debris might reveal the kind of materials employed, but offers no pathway to understand how they were engineered into a coherent, functional system. Globally, history provides consistent evidence of the difficulty of extracting useful intelligence from destroyed weapons. Even leading powers with access to advanced laboratories rarely gain meaningful technological advantage from missile wreckage unless they capture nearly intact systems. Ukrainian engineers examining Russian Iskander fragments or Western analysts studying remnants of Iranian drones, 
face the same limits of destruction and missing context. The intellectual property embedded within a modern missile is not stored in its metal, but in its algorithms, test data, and control software, assets that cannot be physically recovered from an impact crater. To believe that Indian engineers could reconstruct advanced Chinese missile technology from pulverized wreckage, when far better resource nations have failed to do so from more complete samples, defies established engineering logic. A weapon such as the PL-15 is the result of a massive national effort involving extensive modeling, testing, and iterative design refinement. Thousands of engineers and scientists contribute to each stage of its evolution. This accumulated expertise, spanning aerodynamics, material science, propulsion chemistry, and electronic warfare, is what defines the system's performance. It cannot be replicated from scraps of metal and melted silicon. The development of an equivalent weapon would still require years of research, testing, and system integration. The likely result of India's claimed recovery is therefore modest. Limited material analysis, some data on structural materials, and perhaps general insight into design trends. Such information might serve as a baseline reference for their own scientists, but it falls far short of the research windfall suggested by some reports. The true purpose of these claims appears more aligned with psychological warfare and strategic signaling, an attempt to project an image of technological competence and to reassure domestic audiences of progress. It may also serve to exaggerate perceived intelligence successes to foreign observers, fostering a narrative of parity or superiority in the regional technological race. From Pakistan's standpoint, this episode underscores the enduring importance of genuine indigenous research and strategic partnerships. It highlights that meaningful technological advancement cannot be scavenged from the battlefield, but must be cultivated through sustained innovation, intellectual investment, and industrial capacity. The real lesson is that in modern warfare, the most valuable asset is not debris or captured material, but the knowledge ecosystem capable of designing, testing, and evolving advanced systems independently. The mythology of technological shortcuts gained from battlefield fragments persists largely because it satisfies political and psychological needs, not because it reflects engineering truth. In the modern defense environment, where electronic warfare, networked command systems, and software-defined weapons dominate, the decisive edge lies in human expertise, simulation capability, and production agility. For Pakistan, this reinforces the strategic logic of nurturing domestic scientific talent, deepening cooperation with advanced partners, and maintaining a continuous cycle of innovation. True strength in 21st century air power is born not from recovered wreckage, but from living intellect, the human capacity to create, adapt, and outthink technological challenges. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more updates from DEFCAM.